بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا I am pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as my Lord and I am pleased with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my messenger and with Islam as my religion. Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy that each and every one of you are here and I am so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gifting me this opportunity to spend this time with you all and I want to take a moment to congratulate each and every one of you. Because one day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and by the way, when I mentioned the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I would kindly request that each and every one of you send salawat upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a way that the person next to you can hear you so that if they've forgotten, inshallah, you can help remind them. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he once walked outside and saw a group of his companions sitting down, remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and talking about some Islamic knowledge. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, and he said, what caused you to gather here today? And I want to pose that question to you all. What caused you to come here today? Did you ask yourself that when you were getting ready this morning? When you were coming and walking to this hall, did you ask yourself, why am I coming to this lecture? If not, now's your chance to ask yourself that question. And so, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the companions what caused you to gather here today. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, we gather to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We gather to praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we gathered to thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for guiding us to be Muslims, to guiding us to Islam. We thank him for favoring us with this beautiful deen and religion. And so I have a question for you all. Are you happy and grateful to be Muslim? I hope so. Inshallah. So I'm going to ask that again. Are you happy and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gifting you Islam, which is salvation for yourself in this life and the next? Alhamdulillah, right? Well, congratulations to you because listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, Indeed, I'm not suspicious of you and I didn't ask you because I was suspicious. I asked you because Jibreel ﷺ just came to me and he told me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boasting about you to the angels. And so congratulations for being here. Because I pray this is a gathering in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now is boasting about us, is naming us to his angels, and is so happy and pleased with us, inshallah. So we can't think about the ummah we aspire to be without thinking about the Qur'an. And we cannot think about the Qur'an without thinking about our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who one of the closest per people to him his wife Aisha radiallahu anha describes him as being a walking Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the Quran in an ayah that is so beautiful that is so powerful where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi Uswatun Hasana Liman Kana Yarjullaha Wal Yomil Akhir Wadakarullaha Kathira. 
Indeed, there's no doubt about it. In the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you, every single one of us, has an excellent example and a role model. And he's a role model and an example specifically for who? For those who have hope in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and believe in the Day of Judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this beautiful ayah by saying and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who follow the Prophet sallallahu and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. Allahumma ameen. And in another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ if you really love Allah, do you want to know the litmus test? If I was to ask you in this room, do you love Allah? I'm sure every single one of us would say, yes, we do love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a litmus test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you do, Allah will love you and Allah will forgive your sins. So, when I think about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I think about a beautiful statement that he said. And I want you to keep this in mind throughout my entire lecture, every time I mention something about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he said, I am like a loving father to you. I teach you everything. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us everything. He taught us how to eat and how to sleep. He taught us how to interact with others. He taught us how to pray, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He even taught us how to use the restroom and the proper etiquettes of that. And he did so because he loves us. And he said, I am like a loving father to you all. I teach you everything you need to know. And so, I want to ask you, do you feel the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Good. And if you don't, I wanted to take a moment to remind us about his love. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had an extremely challenging life. The 23 years he was a prophet and he was doing his da'wah, he was met with a lot of hostility. He was met with abuse. He was met with a lot of pain. And he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most perfect way. He spread the message in the most beautiful way. He did everything he needed to do. So on the day of judgment, it only makes logical sense that on that day, when he and all of us get out of our graves, he goes straight to Jannah. Because the gatekeepers of Jannah will not open the gates of Jannah for anyone until they open it for him. But guess what? Our beloved Prophet wasallam does not want to enjoy Jannah without you and I. He loves you so much that on that day, instead of going straight to Jannah, he will go and make sujood and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take all of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with him to Jannah. And he will continue to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he goes and he takes us all with him to Jannah insha'Allah. So this is the one who's giving you this advice and this counsel. This is the person who's telling you all of the advices that insha'Allah I want to share with you so that insha'Allah we can become that beautiful ummah, the one that aspires to be like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The first hadith I want to share with you all is the first hadith I learned from my teachers. And in our beautiful tradition, it's a tradition that when you learn from your teacher, this is the first hadith you learn from them. This is a hadith that sums up the essence of our beautiful deen. It sums up the essence of what our ummah should aspire to be. It's a summary of who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was as a human being. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman Irhamu man fil-ard yarhamukum man fil-sama'a 
The merciful ones will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Be merciful to those on the earth and the one in the heavens will be merciful to you. When I think about the ummah that we aspire to be, one of the first things I think about is mercy. Because I think of those beautiful ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran calls the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a mercy for all that exists. And so if we truly want to be come the ummah that is an excellent ummah that is an ummah that follows in the footsteps of its prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the main characteristics we must learn to embody is this characteristic of mercy and this also takes me to my second point where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us something so beautiful he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever is kind and friendly and easy going with people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forbid that person from entering into the hellfire and I want to ask you when you think of the Muslim ummah do you think of a kind friendly and easy going ummah I hope so and I hope and I pray that each and every one of us can be kind friendly and easy going and when we're learning about these narrations, it's easy for us to think of the other people in our lives. Shaytan will come to us and make us think, yeah, you know, my friend so-and-so, or that sheikh that I know is not very kind and merciful, or that person in my family is not very kind and merciful. But that's not the point. The point is for us to do self-reflection. The point is for us to change what's in our control, which is ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask you about someone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about you. Were you merciful? Were you kind? Were you gentle? Were you easygoing with others? Were you friendly? And so, Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates to us a story that perplexed her. She said, one day I was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at home. And while I was sitting there, a man came and asked for permission to enter and speak to the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ heard who it was, the Prophet ﷺ said, Admit him, but he's a wretched man. So Aisha anha was watching and she's like, okay, he's wretched, he's not a good person and you're going to meet him. And then she says, the man walked in and the Prophet ﷺ was so gentle and kind with him. So when the man left, Aisha radiallahu anha, she's like, Ya Rasulullah, you said that this man was wretched and bad, but you spoke to him so kindly and gently. And the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh Aisha, the worst type of person on the Day of Judgment are the people whom other people are afraid to talk to them. They abandon them, they avoid them because they're afraid of their harshness, their vulgarity, their meanness. And so I countered that with gentleness, subhanAllah. So we don't want to be a person that other people are afraid to approach us, to talk to us. Because they know if I come and I speak to this person, they're going to be rude or mean to me. We want to be gentle, friendly, kind, and easygoing, inshallah. We want to follow in the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know what he said to his beloved wife Aisha? He said, oh Aisha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind and he loves kindness and it's, he is pleased with it. He offers support for it, which he does not offer for harshness. And when you think about kindness, it's also easy to think about other people. But kindness starts with being kind to yourself. You are a beloved, honored creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be kind to yourself and others. Ask yourself right now, 
Do I have kind thoughts about myself? How is my self-talk? Is it kind? Is it gentle? Is it loving? If not, inshallah from today we can become more mindful of our self-talk and we can reframe anything negative we say to ourselves to something more positive, kind and gentle. You, my friends, are beloved creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to be a Muslim, to believe in Him. He subhanahu wa ta'ala created Jannah for you. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you guidance, a roadmap so that you can make it to Jannah, to everlasting bliss. You, my friends, are more sacred than the Kaaba. One day the Prophet ﷺ looked at the Kaaba and he said, How magnificent are you? How sacred are you? By Allah, the believer is more sacred than you. You, my friends, are more sacred than the Kaaba. So be kind and gentle to yourself. Don't say harsh words to yourself. Don't say mean things to yourself. Be gentle and kind with yourself and be gentle and kind with others. Even when you make a mistake. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that every single one of us will commit sins, will make mistakes. But the best of us are those who realize it and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah for forgiveness and rectify their ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to beat ourselves up over our sins and our mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you were to come to Him with the entire earth filled with sins, but you seek His forgiveness and you believe in Him alone, He will forgive them all and He would not mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to live in sorrow and in pain. Rather, He wants you to realize that yes, you made a mistake. Turn to Him and ask Him for forgiveness and try your best not to do it again. Not to beat yourself over it for the next 10 years. So friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind and gentle and He loves kindness and gentle in everything and you are a thing. So start off from today being kinder and gentler to yourself and others insha'Allah. The Prophet sallallahu was once asked, he said, Ya Rasulullah, what Islam is the best? And the Prophet sallallahu said, to feed the hungry and to greet with peace those you know and those you don't. Spreading salams and saying assalamu alaikum to others is a way to beautify your Islam and to be like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Spread salams to people you know and people you don't. When you see another Muslim, say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. Don't be that awkward person who walks by a Muslim and avoids eye contact. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he attached great rewards to saying assalamu alaikum to believers. And in this narration, he says to say it to those that you know and those that you don't. So I was wondering, subhanAllah, my teachers have taught us that when you learn something, it's really important to try to act upon it as soon as possible. So I was thinking maybe we can act upon these narrations right now. What if we all turn to the person maybe behind us because I feel like the person next to us is someone we know and by the way brothers with brothers sisters with sisters let's keep this halal and what if we say salams we shake each other's hands and we just introduce ourselves with our names and the city we're from why because the Prophet Sallallahu said that when you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you get at least 30 good deeds and when you shake hands your sins fall so let's try this bismillah You could stand up if it makes it easier. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. 
All right, friends, let's settle down. I have one more tip for you all, inshallah, and then we'll conclude. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You know, subhanAllah, our religion is so beautiful. Just from a mental health perspective, because that's my background, social connections are so very important for our mental wellness. And it's so beautiful that our deen is so holistic, that we have congregational prayers. We have this concept of greeting people we know and we don't. We have this concept of shaking hands and there's so much research that suggests that physical touch releases endorphins and happy hormones in your body. And so alhamdulillah for the blessing of Islam. And when I started off my talk, I started with this beautiful dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that I hope that we can all memorize inshallah, which is raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami deena wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya wa rasula. I am pleased with Allah as my Lord. I am pleased with Islam as my religion and I am pleased with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as my Prophet. Are you truly pleased with this? Are you happy that you're a Muslim and that your Lord is Allah and He's kind and loving and generous? Are you pleased with the Prophet Muhammad as your, as your Prophet and Messenger? This is a beautiful dua that the Prophet said, whoever says it in the morning and the evening three times, which just takes what, one minute? Allah will make them pleased in this life and the hereafter. And if you'd like, uh, follow me on social media and inshallah tomorrow I will create a post and I'll put the dua with the Arabic, English and transliteration so that inshallah you can memorize it as well. Now my last point. When thinking about the ummah that we aspire to be, we can't think about that ummah without thinking about this beautiful narration where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to be considerate of everyone's feelings. The Prophet ﷺ said, when there are three people in a gathering, two of them should not talk to each other and whisper and exclude the third person. Now you might be thinking, why would the Prophet ﷺ tell us that? It makes sense that the Prophet ﷺ teaches us how to pray, how to fast. But that, really? Are you going to tell us that when we're in a group, I can't be whispering to someone? It's because you're so important. Your mental health is important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. When the Prophet was asked, why? Why can't we do that? He said, because if you do that, it will hurt the third person who's excluded feelings. Your feelings are important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. In Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it forbidden, the way He makes it forbidden to steal and to murder, He makes it forbidden to make fun of other people. He makes it forbidden to call someone an offensive nickname. He makes it forbidden to talk about someone behind their back. Why? Because these things are hurtful, not physically, but emotionally. And so friends, be kind and considerate. Be considerate of other people's feelings. And lastly, I'll end with this beautiful hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, you will not have true faith until you love for your brothers and sisters what you love for yourselves. So before interacting with anyone, ask yourself, would I love for someone to do this to me? Would I love for someone to treat me like this? Would I love for someone to say this to me? If not, rethink it. Think of something that's more loving, more kind, more gentle, inshallah, and then do it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us kind, loving, gentle, and easygoing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to embody the same characteristics and qualities of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of our sins and to exchange them for good deeds. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exchange our hardships with ease, our sadness with happiness and contentment with his decree. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exchange our anxieties for tranquility and unshakable trust in Him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us live as Muslims and die as believers. May our last day be our best day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take our souls when He's well pleased with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our graves portions of paradise, resurrect us on the day of judgment on pulpits of light 
and enter us into the highest level of Jannah with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan for listening so attentively and for going along with my little activity. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.